Thank you, Francis. I'll take it from here. Hello, everyone. Coming clean here. Welcome to another episode of Science in the Skylands, the series where I use my expertise as a high school science teacher to discuss scientific topics in the context of the Skylanders games. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the bird, or at least bird-like Skylanders. Hopefully, you will learn something you didn't know about birds, and we'll also take a closer look at some of these figures to see how well they represent actual birds. I hope you'll enjoy the video. In the entire history of recorded life on Earth, the ability to fly has evolved four times. We're not talking about gliding ability here, but so-called active flight, the ability to flap some wing-like structure and lift off the ground. The animal groups with the ability of active flight are insects, bats, the extinct flying reptiles, and finally birds. One of the first things that should be brought up is the ancestry of birds. The most famous example of a non-bird dinosaur that very much looks like a bird is probably Archaeopteryx. Since you can't grow out of your ancestry, birds actually are dinosaurs from a biological perspective. Think about that for a while. But what about the feathers? Where did those come from? Well, dinosaurs were, according to recent findings, covered in feathers to a much larger extent than what the Jurassic World movies would have you believe. Feathers are a great structure for flying. They are light and sturdy at the same time. But nothing in nature evolves with a particular purpose in mind. Evolution doesn't work that way. One of the first functions of feathers was probably to warm the eggs of the dinosaurs. It was only later that they were probably used to glide from tree to tree, which eventually led to active flight ability. Wow, you sure know a lot of stuff about birds. I sure do, Francis, and that's great, because what do I always tell you? That knowledge is power. That's right. <laughs> Let's look at some figures. Okay, so here we have Sonic Boom and Sunburn. Technically, none of these two are birds. Sonic Boom is a griffin and Sunburn is a dragon hybrid, but they do have bird-like features and the point I will try to make will still go. What I'm about to say, I did already mention in my first Biologist Ranks video, which, of course, you are more than welcome to check out by clicking the card appearing on screen right now. The bird-like traits that he do have includes beaks, wings, claws, and so on. They do, however, have a non-bird feature. They have four legs and a pair of wings on their backs, as you can see. Birds here on Earth have one pair of legs and one pair of wings. No vertebrae on Earth has got four legs and a pair of wings. Another bird-like feature that they do have is that they have a strong protruding muscular chest. Birds have this trait because the chest contains all the muscles they need to lift off the ground because it takes a tremendous amount of energy to flap your wings and lift off the ground. So you need to have very strong wings. But the muscles on these guys' chest seem to be attached to their front legs rather than the wings on their backs, as you can see here. So even if the wings on these two looks like they're big enough to lift them off the ground, they could never be strong enough. They simply don't have enough muscles attached to them. So these two, Sonic Boom and Sunburn, are example of creatures that would look like they have a lot of bird-like features, and they do actually, but when examined more closely, you can see that there are details missing, leaving them in the land of fantasy. Birds' ability to fly is of course very beneficial for them, but it's also very costly to maintain. Birds have bones that are partially hollow, which make them lighter, but also more fragile. All birds also have a very effective, but also energy-consuming respiratory system. This is part of the reason why several species of birds have lost their ability to fly when there is no longer a clear evolutionary advantage of doing so. Ostriches is one example, and penguins another. And we do have a penguin skylander after all. Stay frosty. Of course I'm talking about king pen. Penguins live in cold climates where a thick layer of fat is very beneficial for keeping yourself warm. Having to drag said fat up into the air when you try to fly is however not so beneficial. Penguins can't fly, but they still have their feathers that have more of an insulating function. 
Their wings are however used for swimming when they hunt for fish and penguins are excellent swimmers. Even though Kingpin has many penguin-like features, his wings take a bit of a detour from reality. Kingpin doesn't seem to use his wings for swimming but rather punching stuff in the face. They are therefore robust and almost cylindrical in shape. Real penguin wings are flat to give as large area as possible to push back the water as they swim. Cylindrical wings are of course better if you want to attach giant metallic brass knuckles, which in turn will help you in the aforementioned face punching. Now it's time to look at some more sky I want to look at some more sky ladders. What a great idea, Francis. Let's do just that. So here we have Stormblade and Jetvac. Two other character designs, they are designed to be a bit more humanoid, I would guess. They do have some bird-like traits, they have bird-like limbs, they have beaks and so on, and feathers. Apparently also, Jetvac used to have wings on his back, giving him the same problem as Sonic Boom and Sunburn. There aren't enough muscle materials to lift him off the ground. Curiously enough, I ranked Jetvac to be the most realistically designed Skylander from Skylander's Giants in my second Biologist Ranks video. I think that says more about the rest of the cast from that game than it does about Jetvac himself. Then we have Stormblade. She has bird feet where her wings are supposed to be. She doesn't have wings, but she has a sort of plume, a mantle with some sort of attachment to them that look like feathers but they are actually the knives that she throws at her enemies. I mean, this design is, it's really over the top, really. I love the character design, don't get me wrong. I, th I think she's one of the coolest looking Skylanders, but there's nothing realistic going on here. The character design is really wild, actually, but I do like it. So both of these characters are clearly designed to be more humanoid than their friends from the first game. They sort of capture the essence of actual birds, but if you analyze them from a physiological perspective, they do not look much like birds at all. But then again, I really like both character designs here. That's the end of this episode of Science in the Skylands. In the next episode, I will analyze something other than animals. Let's just say I am supercharged for that episode. Thank you very much for watching. Can I use the ant part? Sure thing, Francis. Go ahead. Bye, y'all. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe for weekly content. See you next time.